So we are playing with the layer styles of our black shape EPS smart object within Photoshop. And we don't ever want to rasterize it if we can help it. I'll show you the one instance in which we do need to rasterize aspects of it if we want that color effect. But right now I'm just playing with the gradient. So changing the black shapes into this gradient. I opened up the gradient, the rainbow of it. I'll show you that again. So it's all here. If I turn the effects off, if I turn them on, if I double click on them, I can get into them. I have a color overlay of blue. That color overlay is at 50%, so the black is coming through, so it's this nice dark blue. I can turn that off. I can put the gradient overlay on. It's this really bright, you know, crazy colorful rainbow. If I double click on that, I can adjust the distance between the gradients. I can even add additional colors. So if I wanted this to be a yellow or green, for instance, I can add that in. I can push that more to the edge. There's just so much you can do. Okay, what I like to do is layer up my gradient with my color overlay. So I do a pretty crazy gradient, but then I do a color overlay at, a, at varying opacities over the top of it. So this makes the color very subtle, very kind of sciency and institutionally. So I'll just say that that's good. Then I can add other effects like satin. Satin will break it up in ways that aren't with the angle of the gradient. So it's really subtle. And you can change those settings, but you'll see how we'll give it a slight core shadow and a slight highlight. If I take that opacity up, you'll, you'll see what that does. So there's the core shadow. There are the highlights. And that's dependent on the individual shapes. Satin works for some of it, like the, the column a lot better than others. You can also give the satin a color. So I'll give it kind of a purplish, or let's warm it up, maybe a pinkish color. There's just so much you can do with color variations. I'll take that opacity down. Yep. So many things. You can play with the contrast, the size. I just want it slightly there. And it's going to be different how these tools work depending on the shapes that you bring in. All right, next. I'm just going to go through all of these. Inner glow. Sometimes you want that. It will go from the edge of your shapes and it will give a soft edge glow around it. And you can make that glow screen or you can make it normal. I prefer screen or lighter color or lighten because it helps blend it with the colors you've already chosen. You can play with how strong that is, how large it is. And you can, of course, play with the opacity. The problem with it is it does soften the edges of your shape. And that can sometimes make your logos a little less readable. So I'm not going to use it for mine. Then there's the opposite. There's inner shadow, which will give you a darker edge at the edges of your shape. And you can set that with, with various settings. Multiply is the, is the default. This gives it kind of a red multiply. I'm going to give it more of a burgundy and then take the opacity down a little bit. Then there is stroke, which is very familiar to those of you that use strokes in Illustrator, right? Outline strokes. So you can put a color to your stroke. I'll show you with gray. You can put the size and you can put whether it goes on the outside of your shapes or on the inside of your shapes. And usually I recommend if you use a stroke with your logo shapes, you want to do it on the inside because then it doesn't change your silhouette. So let's see, let's do something really crazy and let's use like a, a bright yellow. Right. And then you can decide if you actually want that or an olive green. And so clearly these things can get overdone. 
Then this is all internal to the image. Then there is a texture. And texture can, is very, very popular with color variations on logos. It will add an automatic emboss because this is like a layering of 3D modeling over the top of your image so you can set the lighting. And then you can have to play with the contour as well. And you can decide how strong that is, how much depth there is. Looks like it's made out of alligator skin. And how smooth it is. Starfish skin. That's cool and sciencey. Nice. So these are all kind of variations you might play with. I kind of like this because it looks a little bit like watercolor. Like it's on watercolor paper. And now I'm going to turn on the white behind it, the white background, just so I can gauge my colors. And you can layer these up. So I might make another copy of my just black EPS, and I might move it on top of my colors. And then I might just do something as simple as a color overlay at 100% that's a bright color, like a pale yellow, just so I can play with its opacity on top of what's underneath. Right? Even if it's only at 8%, I kind of like how that lightens it up. Or I can do one of my favorite things for vector shapes, which are always about kind of clean fills. And I change it from normal mode to dissolve mode. And that will give me a, a sand grain texture when it prints, which helps make it look a little, a little softer, a little more reliable. That yellow is a little strong, so let me take that opacity down. Okay, so these are all internal to the image. So the problem with the dissolve uh, blending mode is that it, it shows up a little weird on the screen, but when you're viewing it at real pixels, you'll see how it actually prints. It's quite a subtle and nice design. Okay, now what are the other effects that I might use? They are the drop shadows or the outer glows. So drop shadow is very popular. You really want to take time with it to get the angle right. Turn on the white layer underneath. Understand where the best light source is for it. This just makes it look like it's floating above the, the surface it's on. And the bigger the shadow, the bigger the size, the softer it will be. But then you can choose the distance how close it is, and the color of it as well, and the opacity of it. So I like to keep them fairly sharp if I use them. And I will just so you can see the, di the difference. But not that opaque, because if it, the drop shadow gets too opaque, it really changes the shape of your logo. And not too distanced. So you really just play around with those settings. And then you can also make it noisier, which helps break it up. I'll zoom in so you can see. That's with some noise, about halfway. This is the drop shadow without any noise, just very blurry. This is with all the noise. And it just, oh, that's size, shoot. <laughs> that's with no noise, that's with all the noise, which might be a little distracting. But I like to build in a little bit of that for my own designs when I do color variations on symbols, even though it looks weird when you zoom out. So that looks about right. I say OK. And now I have my color variations. And they can be turned off just by turning off the effects. So here you just see the, the yellow dissolve on top of the black. I can turn that off, and I just get the black. Okay, one last thing to keep in mind. I can save this now as a PNG, but it's going to be my color PNG. So I'm going to say save as a copy with having the background turned off and having all the color effects turned on. 
I'm not going to save it as a Photoshop. I'm going to save it as a PNG, but I'm not going to save it as my black shape logo. I'm going to call it my color version. And then I can check on my desktop or wherever I'm saving it. I'm saving it to my folder that I get those PNGs because that's what's going to be loaded onto Canvas. And if I open it in preview, it's going to float that way. That's how those colors and that drop shadow are working uh, as the PNG. It's pretty nice. So subtle color. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is a logo needs to be clear, simple, versatile. Clear, engaging, versatile. In order to be versatile, if it's a black shape logo, that means if you try to put it onto a black t-shirt, a black business card, you can't see it at all. So what I recommend is to truly make this versatile. This is kind of extra. But turn on your background layer and then make a duplicate of it. And then instead of filling it with white, fill it with middle gray. So you go edit, fill, and instead of white, you do 50% gray. Yeah, so then you figure out the ways that you can make this same logo work on a gray background, on a white background, and on a solid black background. So I'm going to duplicate that background again and say edit, fill, and put it on black. Now this is called, there's lots of terms for it, but it's called creating an offset for it. So it shows up. So let me turn off some of those color effects, and let me turn off that dissolve effect, and you can't see the logo. It's there, it's solid black, but you can't see it. So how can you make that show up a little bit better? If I double click, I can always put a stroke around it, and then it will show up. I can make that stroke white. That's the most basic offset. And I can make it on the outside or on the center and find a size that doesn't look too terrible, right? For me, it would be pretty thin, something like that. That's one way I could do it. Another way, I'll turn that stroke off, I can do an inner glow or an outer glow. I'm going to choose white as the color, but you can do whatever you like. And I can grow it a little bit. And I can jitter it a little bit. And I can add noise. Noise. Play with how opaque that is. And so this is kind of an extra challenge. How can you make a logo that works well on all the backgrounds? So that works well on black. It looks terrible on gray. Looks even... Well, it looks a little bit better on white. But on gray, it just it looks like it's being swallowed up. So then, you know, I add my color variations. And you can move effects between layers. So you just have lots of ways you can go. So I like my color variation on black. I like it on gray. Kind of. I like it on white. I don't love it on gray, but most of the time things don't need to go on middle gray. But that kind of represents all the colors that are that value. But actually, how can I make it look a little bit better on gray? I can make another duplicate of it. Move that up to the very top, just like I did with the yellow with the dissolve. And the effect I can make is a gradient that's a really strong contrast gradient. So one that's basically warm to cool, like that. And I could even enhance those colors. Keep them colors, but very dark versions, like that. And then I can set that to be Not a normal mode, but an overlay mode. Or let's see, a pin light mode. Or a soft light. Hmm. No, that's over it's over black, so let's keep it normal. 
and then I can maybe dissolve that.